I picked up this window AC from the curb, figuring I could fix it. The motor still ran, but it wouldn't cool, so there's probably no refrigerant left in it. So I took it apart with the kids, they always enjoy that sort of thing. And the pieces I'm keeping is the fan motor and the compressor, and this is what I want to try out in this video. The uh, compressor has got three wires coming out of it, and there's also this capacitor inside, which is a combined uh, 45 plus 15 microfarad capacitor. And one terminal here is labeled fan, so probably the other two are needed for the motor. Under this cover, there's this thing here. I'm pretty sure that's an uh, overprotection switch in terms of temperature. And then we have terminals labeled C, R, and S. Not much of a clue here, but C probably means common. The way these motors typically work is you have the motor and two windings at a right angle to each other. The run winding, which is always engaged, and the start winding, which is in series with the capacitor to give it a sort of a phase shift. And sometimes that has a switch on it for only engaging during start, and on some motors that's always running. I don't see any sort of starter switch on the motor, so either the main circuit board uh, pulse the start winding or it's always on. I measure the DC resistance between the three terminals, and between C and R I get 2.6, and then 1.4 to R, and S to R is 3.8 ohms. And basically the 1.4 plus the 2.6 ohms is 4 ohms, which is pretty close to the 3.8 ohms I'm getting across here, especially because the meter always reads about 0.1 ohm high. That tells me that internal I've got basically a winding going here and a winding going here. And if I measure between those two here, I essentially go through both of those, so that resistance is this one plus this one. And with the red wire going to common, I know the other two connect to the capacitor, and that's not the fan one, so it goes to this one and this one. And the 120 volt power goes to common and the run winding. So common is the red terminal here, and the blue lead here goes to R, so I'll just try it on here. So let's plug that in and see what happens. That's sounding good. Drawing 340 watts. And let's see. Yeah, there's air coming out of it here. And it sucks on here. So that's likely to be correct, but let's just try applying power to the other side of the capacitor and try it again. Okay, that doesn't sound the same. And we're drawing oh, too much power, so definitely not the right way. I think I was running it backwards too. With power applied to blue again, let's try it with me disconnecting the start winding after the motor has started. So we got 284 watts, and let's disconnect that capacitor. 248 watts without. 233 with it. Hmm. It's hard to tell whether it's supposed to be on there or not. It certainly draws less current with the capacitor on there. So I'll just assume the capacitor is meant to stay on there, because then I don't have to worry about switching it on and off. And leaving it running for a while, I'm now down to 200 watts, so that's good. And it's still blowing plenty. So I want to measure how much volume this pumps, so I put a balloon here on the output, and let's just film that getting inflated. So time to inflate was 35 seconds to 11 and a half inches diameter. And I worked it out, that's a sphere of 0.463 cubic feet, but it was a stretch sphere, so add 25% because it was longer, 0.579 cubic feet. So divide that by the number of minutes that it took, and we're very close to one CFM output. And that's not too bad compared to my cheap shop compressor, because this thing is really loud, and it only does five CFM. <laughs> I want to measure the output pressure with this pressure gauge, but I need some kind of fitting to put that on the output here. Pressure rising. 
I think I'll hold on to it just in case it pops off. I do have a little bit of leakage, I can feel it. 100 PSI? Seems to be stalling out around 125, but that's with a little bit of leakage. With that tightened up a bit, I'm getting a fair bit more pressure. Well, it's not too bad. 175, 200 PSI, that's a lot. So that's probably about 250 PSI though. I think that might be as far as I need to go. So I can hear quite a bit of hissing from the leakage here. There's also some sound coming out of here. So there's air coming out the input, which is to say the uh, valves in this compressor don't seal perfectly. Now this compressor was designed to run with R410A refrigerant. Now suppose on a hot day the condenser is at 45 degrees Celsius. That requires actually about 400 PSI to force that refrigerant into condensation. So I'm well within the limits of this compressor. Now I could try to use this thing to build my own air compressor, but that's actually quite complicated. Because most compressors, including this one, won't start when they're under pressure, so you need some kind of a bleeder valve to bleed away the pressure here, followed by a check valve so that the pressure from the tank doesn't feed back into here. You also need that check valve because the valves in this one leak a little bit. Then you need a pressure switch to turn the compressor on and off when it's full, and you need a safety valve to relieve the pressure if it gets too high, and of course a tank, and then the output, and potentially a pressure regulator on the output. So that would be an awful lot of bits and pieces I'd need to build a compressor. I guess I could use it to replace the actual pump unit of a broken compressor, but I don't have a broken compressor. But I didn't have a specific use in mind when I got uh, this blower unit either, and it's come in handy for so many things. And this thing here, when I last did my uh, balloon popping pressure experiments, um, this would have been very handy to have because I have a very predictable flow rate out of it, and it's nice and quiet too. I could also use it as a vacuum pump for either a vacuum chamber or vacuum bagging, so many possibilities. But I think if I leave this running for a long time, I'll need to have a fan blowing at it to cool it, because inside the AC unit, it was right next to the fan in there too, so it always had lots of wind. Well, this unsafe device is even more unsafe at 200 PSI. There's a marble in there, but it wasn't quite enough to make it all the way through. Oh well, I guess I should have used more pressure. Got my marble back.